Ladies. Okay, here we are. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ladies Power Lunch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we are so blessed to have with us a very, very special guest, Donna. And she's going to be talking to us about something that I think we can all relate to, just how to be happy, how to have joy in our lives, even when things on the outside aren't looking that great. In any kind of climate, you can actually reach for that inner joy. So before we welcome Donna, we have a few guests here in the room with us, and I'd like to invite you to go ahead and unmute, and Marianne, Laura, and Shauna Lee, will you introduce yourselves? Our on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. And I'm hearing somebody's background as we are mute. You're so live on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Having a little bit of glitchiness today. But Marianne, would you mind going ahead and introducing yourself? Sure. I'm Marianne Pack. I have MariannePack.com. And I am um, a spiritual guide that also helps people find their joy and find out who they really are and living in that. Um, but I'm also a coaching concierge, so I help match clients with their perfect coach at this season of their life. Perfect. And as we, you know, go through our Ladies Power Lunch workshops and meetings and things like that, you're all going to learn a whole lot more about Marianne. So I invite you to pay close attention because she's the mover and the shaker that you're going to want to know. Laura, welcome. Can you tell everybody who you are and what it is that you're doing in the world? Yeah. Um, yeah. So my name is Laura Maida, um, and I've been working as a digital marketing manager for the past five years. Um, and right out of college, I went to work for a serial entrepreneur. So I worked for him in Three different online media companies so i have you know experience in you know social media marketing digital advertising email marketing and event marketing um and of course like i'm currently looking for like a new um marketing <coughs> position so if any of you know of anybody that's looking for a marketing professional um yeah definitely um reach out to me so, so that's thank me you. thank you Laura. <laughs> and shauna lee welcome Thanks so much for joining us today. Will you tell us who you are and what it is that you do? Sure, thank you so much. Um, I'm Shauna Lee Waterbury Quashnock, and I am a professional portrait artist specializing in children and pets. And I bring joy to others by bringing, um, bringing their pets to life on canvas. And you could see in my background a, a few of my pieces and, and my little model who's trying to help me here today. She wants to cuddle. Oh, so <laughs> you're not the jumper. only one, Donna, who has your pet with you on the call. Oh. That's wonderful. Awesome. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys, for introducing yourselves. And thank you for hopping on to the call to share with us your talents and beautiful gifts. Donna, welcome. So happy <laughs> to have you here because you're talking about the thing that is so important to me, the thing that I live and breathe by, just being able to find that inner peace. Can you tell everybody who you are, what it is that you do in the world, and probably just share with us what led you to, you know, starting to talk about this kind of topic? Absolutely. Well, right now I'm uh, retired from my career of sorts. You know, I've transformed and changed my career a dozen times, but I started as a, a rock rhythm and blues singer touring, uh, touring the nation and Asia. And then when my kids got to a certain age, I went to school and became a social worker and was the executive director of an agency that taught family strengthening and prevented child abuse, positive parenting. And then I did that for 30 years and uh, then became an adjunct professor teaching happiness and wellness at the university because in my, in my work in social work, I realized that um, people were missing the boat. We were working with families and seeing that uh, agencies, organizations were all focusing on what people did wrong uh, and what the problems were. Mm 
And I thought there had to be something else. There's got to be something else because it was you take an oath to respect the dignity and value of people. And then you go in and only point out what they're doing wrong. How is that respecting their dignity and their worth? So um, I heard about Tal Ben-Shahar, who is the Harvard professor that brought the science of happiness and positive psychology to Harvard. And he was teaching a course at Cripello in Massachusetts. So I went and studied under him and then became his teacher's assistant and learned these strategies that, you know, they're not rocket science. We could all do it. And it it improves the quality of your life, no matter who you are or where you are. You know, a lot of the researchers teach to Ivy League. And so there were a lot of PhDs and a lot of people that wanted to integrate positive psychology into their practices. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to bring it to Main Street, to everyday people like me and, <laughs> you know, and my family and people I know and love and the, the families I worked with. So um, I began to work with the strategies from that perspective. And now I'm an author and I teach, I teach this all over the nation at symposiums and um, workshops, yoga centers, things like that, the university still. And I have a trilogy coming out about how everybody can be unshakably happy. Unshakably happy. That, yes. is, that is so important. One of my favorite mentors, Dr. Deepak Chopra, he likes to talk about mm -hmm. being the eye of the hurricane, mm -hmm. being able to stand firm in your inner joy and your inner peace, even when the world is swirling around you. And that is so <laughs> meaningful for me. So tell me, how can we get to this point? What is the secret? What is it that you've learned that we all need to know? You know, I studied under Deepak. I went to his college in California, studied with him and with Wayne Dyer. It was a, a marvelous experience. Well, that was a great experience for you. I miss yes. that boat. <laughs> yes. And I was so excited. I wanted a picture with him. And I, you know, he always has this harem of women around him, just protecting him from everyday folks like me that would say, you know, I want, a, I want a selfie, I want a picture. And so he finally said, yes, you can have a picture. So I put my camera up and I took that picture, got everybody's head except his, got him <gasps> from the neck down. <laughs> that exactly is how it was meant to be. Absolutely. Yes, that's my silly Deepak story. But um, yeah, you know, the, the only way to really become unshakably happy is to, uh, as an adult, do a new roadmap to your values and to what you aspire to be like and uh, to start engaging in your life in that way because that's the core of who we are. And it's uh, we spend a lot of years doing what other people expect of us and what our careers expect of us, what our children expect of us. You know, we spend a lot of years doing that. And somewhere inside of us, you feel this little uh, fire that starts every once in a while. Oh, someday I'd like to do that. Oh, someday. Or, oh, I wish I hadn't have said that. You know, I wish I said more of this in that situation. And that's your inner grace. That's who you are. That's your that's your voice speaking to you. That's grace manifesting itself in you. That's where that peace comes from. But we quiet that voice down and they say like the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We have all these great intentions for ourselves, but we don't really follow through on it until we reach a spot in our lives where we can no longer go on the way we are, you know? And then we start tapping into our ideal self, our best self. And in that way, we look at our spirituality, who we are physically. We do that mind-body connection. We do some intellectual work. Uh, maybe we start to learn something new or we read something that inspires us. Um, we look at our relationships. Are they toxic? Are they healthy? Are, am I really showing up in the world in these relationships like who I want to be? Or do I get angry when I'm around this person or sad or do I always leave this situation feeling less than who I am so we look at our relationships and improving those and then emotionally we say am I happy am I happy do I get up every day and just go through the motions or 
do I get up every day and say, ooh, what's the surprise in store for me today? How am I going to be able to take who I am and my strengths and serve it forward in the world? And that's what feels unshakably happy because we can't, we can't predict the situations that are going to come to us. We can't predict um, if this morning, right before I got on with you, I got a, a text from a, a dear friend of mine that I, she's, she has COVID. And she has many other situations, so I'm terribly worried about her. But the grace in me, the unshakably happy part, was like, okay, how can I show my friend? How can I serve my friendship forward in this situation? What can I do, you know, to uplift her, to elevate her, to be there for her somehow, some way? Even if it's a shop and drop, you know, I pick something up and drop it off her doorstep, whatever it is, how can I continue uh, to show my love for her in a different way. And how can I be grateful for all the things we've ever done together? And in those moments, I still smile, you know? So these are ways that we, we show up um, unshakably happy, no matter what is coming at us. I cannot hear you. I think you're muted. I am muted, but I'm, <laughs> well, I'm not muted anymore. That is, so, so wonderful, beautiful, beautiful um, explanation of that, certainly. So for, you know, those of us who are watching, we, we kind of want to know what are the things that we should be doing perhaps every day to be solid in that unshakable happiness? Well, I have something for you do, to do, actually. If you were to think right now of a hero, it could be a Marvel Comics hero. It could be God. It could be your grandmother, your mother, your best friend, your lover, whoever it is. You think of a hero in your life, someone that when you're around them, you get more energy. When you're around them, you there's qualities in them that make you say, yeah, I like that. And just think of one or two of those qualities right now. Think of those qualities until the corners of your mouth come up just a little bit. Think of those qualities. And if you have them in your mind, then I can say to you, that's part of your ideal self because you cannot recognize these qualities in someone else unless they are already a seed planted in you. So aspiring to be like that every day and the more, you know, at night we think about what we're grateful for. I'm sure you all know uh, some of Sonia Lubomirsky's work on research on uh, gratitude and the benefits, the health benefits of gratitude. And in fact, at the summit uh, that we're doing with uh, Liz Phil, I'll be teaching gratitude in that. So it's, I'm looking forward to it. But gratitude does an awful lot for our health and well being and happiness. So if you think about these qualities that resonate in you that you're excited about, you get up in the morning and you look at them and you say, I am generous. I am kind. I am thoughtful. I am not someone who judges. I'm someone who accepts people for who they are. Whatever the qualities are that you found in these heroes. And you say, I am before it. Mm -hmm. You set yourself up during that day to behave in that way. So your mind, uh, the mind-body connection is a, is a really powerful thing. And so we are, we are finding that we can fake it till we make it in some areas. And the brain will begin to believe that this is who we are. And we start to behave in that way. So these are enablers. You know, we think about who we want to be in the world someday, right? I want to be like this, someday I'll have the opportunity. Maybe we tell ourselves we need more money or we need more time or we need more rest or we need more education, you know? I have a sister who is brilliant in, in so many areas and talented in so many areas, but she's a full-time student. She's in her seventies, she's still going to school to be good enough. You know, but, it's okay if you're still going to school at 70, because I plan I, but to, what I'm saying but to if the intention is to <laughs> be good enough, then you've missed the idea. I exactly. feel like if I lived for 
oh, thousands of years, I still wouldn't have learned all the things that I want to learn. So I'm continuing to be a lifelong learner. But I do get what you're saying about yeah. wanting to make sure that you're not doing that just so you can feel like you're good enough. Not exactly. Waiting for the next exactly. Day. So I'm I'm st- I'm always in school too. I don't mean don't go to school. And and I'm 65 and love every minute of being 65. But I will say that um, you have to engage in your life now. And and if COVID is teaching us anything, it's teaching us that we really don't have forever, do we? We all think you know in terms of I have forever. But we really don't know that. So how can I engage fully in my life right now, today? Not with my thoughts way in the past about something I still need to do or way in the future about something one day I hope to do. But today, how can I fully engage? And in that way, you're saying your I am statements, you're showing up with people uh, with that mindset, a more positive mindset, what you're grateful for. Um, what you want out of that relationship. And you start to, your thoughts, your words, and your behaviors start to match up with that ideal self. And you begin to live a life worth living for yourself. You're not waiting for the ship to come in because guess what? The ship never comes in. The ship's always been here. (laughs) We've been on the ship. (laughs) So we can start living our life right this minute. Right this minute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. Do you have thank you, Jackie, for that comment? Do you have any stories that sort of reinforce what it is that you're saying? Any things that have happened either with you or stories that you know of that really reinforce how important it is for us to stay focused in the moment and really enjoy our lives now every single minute of it? Oh, my goodness. Well, I've been teaching this for about nine years now. So the stories are endless, how it has changed people's lives. But one that's standing out for me right now, and he would laugh if he knew I was bringing this up, but I taught a happiness course at the university. And this guy that came to it was just, you know, I only took this course because I needed one more to graduate. And I was, you know, not really interested in happiness. Not everybody wants to be happy. And I'm like, Really? Okay. So let's go through this anyways. Well, by the end of the course, this guy, just from learning to do simple things like writing things he was grateful for at night and getting up and looking at his ideal statements. You know, I say write your I am statements on a sticky note, stick it on your mirror where you're brushing your teeth so you can't help but look at it every morning and read it to yourself, reinforcing these things and until it becomes a habit. And so he started doing these things. And on the last day of the course, when we had um, (laughs) projects to show to get your final grade, his wife showed us. And his wife said to me, you saved our marriage because he was always so unhappy and grumpy. I didn't think I was going to stay in this marriage, but I'm back in love with the man that I first recognized when we were dating and they had a child. And now that was, I want to say, six years ago. He was in that class. To this day, he sends me pictures of him with his wife or his kid on, on Facebook. And he'll say, this is my happy moment today. This is what I'm cherishing. This is what I'm savoring. And I thought, wow, you know, that's all it is. What, what, what do we have in today that we can say? I'm savoring this. I'm looking at all your beautiful faces and those lovely comments that are coming up in the chat. And I'm savoring this moment. It is giving me positive emotion and and peak moments. And with that in our day, we get more dopamine and and all those groovy hormones (laughs) that make us smile, you know? And um, I know the rest of the day will have its ups and downs, but my base is solid in grace and gratitude, faith and hope and, engaging in my life as who I am, no matter what. 
Wonderful, wonderful. I want to just take a moment to say hi to all the ladies who've joined us over in our Ladies Power Lunch Facebook group. Uh, hi, Noelle. Thanks for chiming in. Hi, Robin. Robin says, wow, Donna, how amazing is that? And what wonderful mentors to learn from. Judy joined us and she says, showing up is key. That's a great check for relationships. Hi, Carrie. Carrie says, <laughs> love showing up unshakable happy and inspire and empower others to do the same mm -hmm. and akanke is also joining us and she says engage in our lives now indeed love this mm -hmm. hi dr shepherd and donna just joining and it sounds wonderful i am statements are very empowering and you're getting a lot of hearts and likes over here <laughs> with our facebook community so a lot of people are really resonating with what you're saying. I mean, we just schedule these workshops for a very tight half hour, but this mm -hmm. is something that we could dive into for oh, a yeah. much longer time and really yes. get a lot more mm -hmm. um, information from you out of it. Yes. Oh, so absolutely. We don't have that kind of time today. I would say for those of us tuning in or watching on the replay, those of us catching it on the podcast or over on our YouTube channel, what are the final words of wisdom that you have for us? Well, you know, I have a book that actually is just coming out and I have it right here. It's called The View From Within. It's such a beautiful book. Uh, so you. I need to just say we have a mutual publisher and yes, I was we do. your book this morning and I had a little bit of book envy because <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I co-wrote this with Joe Bologna who is a wonderful photographer. So the photography is elevating in it and the reason I bring it up is because um, it's about spirituality and its pathways to happiness. When you learn about uh, what keeps you happy for a sustainable, sorry about my parrot, a sustainably, what you um, realize is that you need a spiritual foundation. And I'm not talking about a religious um, denomination necessarily. I'm, although that's a great way to have community and to practice what you believe. But I am talking about knowing what your purpose is and living that, you know, finding meaning in your life. And so what we did was we uh, took a look at all the spiritual traditions around the world, the ancient wisdom keepers, and we found the blessing in each one. And we speak about how you are blessed um, no matter what wisdom tradition you're thinking about, and we name them. And um, the research today that's being done on spirituality and its pathways to sustainable happiness shows that it pulls out the emotions of love and peace and gratitude and forgiveness and compassion, empathy, all those emotions that get lost in some of the lower vibrating emotions like anger and fear and disappointment and uh, betrayal and so those things muddy up our ability to shine through with the higher emotions but spirituality gives you pathways to get there so it's the first book in the trilogy the next book is unshakable happiness that we're working on right now uh, and the last one is about love and connection, because these are the three main things that help you feel like you have a life worth living, you know, that, that keep you from falling way down in the rabbit holes when things get tough, you know? So, um, I mean, it's not like we're all going to be giddy the rest, you know, because then I'd think we were certifiable in another way. But um, we can be happy. And we we can find grace filled moments in uh, even the biggest tragedies. Absolutely, so. we can find grace filled moments even in the biggest tragedies. That is, I think, the best takeaway for us for today. I wanna. We have just a few minutes left on our call today, and I wanna invite. The people who joined us here on the Zoom, if you have any questions for Donna, this would be the time to just chime in before 
we have to say goodbye. Any questions, comments for Donna? Definitely congratulations on your new book. It is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. We're excited about getting these messages out so people can, you know, start to practice what they've always wanted to practice. They just sort of needed permission to do it, you know. I had a professor, two professors that I worked under that one said, uh, Tal Ben Shahar always said, give yourself permission to be human. You know, either if you make a mistake, it's okay. Permission to be human, right? And then Maria Sara, who was the professor that worked with him in the happiness program said, wait a minute, give yourself permission to be magnificent. And then I thought, hey, that's the one I wanna go with. <laughs> Permission to be magnificent, you know. Permission and, to be magnificent. Oh my yes. goodness. That is, that is just the be best thing I've ever heard. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Marianne, did you have a question for our beautiful guest today? No, I just wanted to thank you, Donna. This is just so good. I have a whole page full of notes. So it's been awesome. Great. I appreciate you. Thank beautiful. you. Thank you. So Donna, I know everybody who's watching us here now on our live stream, everybody who's catching up with us on our podcast, everybody who's going to catch the replays over on our Ladies Power Lunch YouTube channel, they're all going to want to reach out to you. They're going to want to connect with you. How can they touch bases with you? Well, the best way is through the website, and the website is uh, www.happilyeveractions.com. Oh, happily ever actions i love that that is thank a beautiful you. name for a website awesome thank you wonderful, yes it's wonderful there are actions there are actions we can do every day to you know bring about more i happiness love and joy. this conversation so much i talk to patients and clients and on some of the talks that I do about the happiness prescription. And I remind people that being happy is a practice. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that magically shows up. And I love the story that you shared about your student whose life completely changed because he realized that it could happen for him too if he did mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. I love the happily ever action being your website it, it just ties in perfectly it makes beautiful sense and i know our listeners and our viewers will be really really happy to reach out to you and definitely i look forward to them also reaching out and getting your books as your all the episodes of your trilogy come out everybody mm -hmm. it was wonderful having donna here today we hope to have her back soon Thank you so much to everybody who joined us here and also over in our Facebook group. I am giving you all permission to be magnificent <laughs> today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And I'll see you guys Bye. on the next show. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Davia.